know how to go crazy? Yeah. You guys got that crazy brave heart look in your face? Yeah. Come on, Mel Gibson, the freedom, the crazy look, right? The die hard look. You guys, are you feeling it? Can you do it? Help me welcome to this stage the amazing, beautiful, incredible Rick and Casey Jiha. Woo! Or Casey Jiha. Woo! All right, good afternoon. It is so great to see so many faces still here. Yesterday, I was coming down the elevator, and there was a lot of people in the elevator, and somebody came around the corner that I love and adore in the brightest, most magnificent shirt, and I was like, back up, everyone. we got to make room in the elevator, and so we did, and as this person entered the elevator, I said to him, wow, what did that shirt do to deserve to get on that body? <laughs> and I went to hug him, and... I noticed it was like, man, something must be going on with him because he doesn't hug me the way that he normally hugs me. And by the time we got down to the first floor and, and we're getting off, someone that had a little bit more awareness in that moment than I did said, uh, he thinks you insulted him. And I was like, what? No, he doesn't think that. And initially I was in shock because of how much I care for this human. And the second thing that happened is my heart actually hurt because the intent of having words come out of my mouth that would cause that effect for someone else like literally broke my heart. So we cleaned it up imme immediately and then we had a laugh about it. But what does this have to do with production and recruiting and building an organization? What it has to do with is the fact that we are in a people business. And when you can master the human game, you can master production and you can master attraction and recruiting. Now, how many of you have heard, you've got to have a really big why? You've got to have a why so big that you jump out of bed in the morning before the alarm goes off, like ready to go out and create it. By a show of hands, how many of you have heard that? Keep your hands up if you buy into that being the truth. Oh, wow, a lot of hands went down. I wonder why that is. How many of you have ever found yourself in a place of not taking action and not moving forward because you didn't feel your why was big enough or that you could clearly communicate your purpose on the planet so that it would impress yourself and those who you might say it to? There's some honesty, right? There's some honesty. So what are the things, what are the conversations, what are the questions that we can start to ask ourselves that Get us out of bed every day to get out and serve. If you were to ask me why my why is, I don't know. I've known at times in the past and clearly communicated, and then I outgrew that why. If you ask me what my purpose on the planet is, I don't know. To have experiences, impact. I used to think it was impact. What is that? Well, that's if I help enough other people. Like, I want to have an impact, right? But why? so that I could feel better about myself. I'm like, ooh, that doesn't feel so good. And then there's the gap of not knowing. So what am I gonna do, nothing? No, I'm not. I'm gonna get up every day, I'm gonna do what I know how to do, and trust that everything is gonna come together because I'm in action and I'm taking forward progress in a direction that is a direction that I wanna go. And not wait till I have it all figured out, and not wait till it's perfect, and get in the game. So there's three questions that I'm going to leave you with today that I'm going to suggest if you're willing to honestly make these three questions the bedrock and the backbone of your life, your business life, your personal life, your spiritual life, your physical life, your emotional life, every aspect of your life, and you start to look for these things in other humans, that all of the how-tos on production and recruiting and attraction then become applicable when you've got the human suit in line. So question number one is, who am I? Who am I? I want you to write down that question. Who am I? Not who am I, who are you? Write down that question for yourself. Who am I? If I'm really attached to who I am and I make decisions outside of that and then I become stuck, getting positioned on who I am might not be the best thing for me. And that's where the next question comes into play because none of us are perfect like I wasn't on the elevator last night regardless of my intent. 
right? Next question is, who am I becoming? Who am I becoming? Am I becoming more loving, more kind, more considerate, more abundant? Or am I becoming someone that's withholding or that's withdrawing or that's resenting or that's comparing? Who am I becoming? And then the most important question of all is, who am I committed to becoming? Who am I committed to becoming? And these questions can be a guideline that if you're willing to check in and take inventory and self-reflect and be honest about those things, what you'll realize is that when you master the game of being human, which is a never-ending process, and you look to help other people do the same thing, that all of the how-tos on production, how-tos on recruiting will take care of themselves because the foundation that those things are being built on is one that's solid and one that's can they, that will endure and that can grow over time and that can do all of the things that those of you that are already clear on your purpose and clear on your why see when you look into the future and your vision. And so I believe that every experience that we have in life every opportunity that comes across our path, every person that we're in front of, we're in front of for a reason. I know I have something to learn from every person I stand in front of, and I also have something to contribute. And thank goodness the industry of real estate found me in 2004 when I got licensed because that is, was an opportunity for me to become an entrepreneur in the way that many of you are today. But most importantly for me, what real estate brought me was my husband. Now, some of you have not met him before. And if you have not met him before, let me tell you what, uh, what people say about him. Well, what I say about him, actually. And that is because I sat in his class as a newly licensed real estate agent at the beginning of 2005. And at the end of that class, I called my mom and my sister because I just had an amazing experience that moved my soul, that made me want to be a better human because of the kind of human that I experienced him being throughout the course of that class. And as I sat in that class that day, I knew that there was a reason that I had chosen that career, a reason that I had sat in that class and met that person, and that that was no accident and no mistake. Now, it wasn't until three and a half years later that we ended up on our first date. Uh, however, for those of you that have not yet met him, I fondly refer to him, and please help me welcome to the stage the Sean Connery Jesus Christ of real estate. Bye. I hate those introductions. <laughs> um, all right, so I've got a few minutes to move you into action and we have heard some incredible things haven't we like everything you can imagine from mindset to ac action plans and the execution of the plans and coaching programs and coaching offers i've been coaching for 30 years i've been selling real estate for 43 plus years i still sell real estate and i can tell you i've been coaching with workman success systems for the last eight years I got to tell you, if Brent Gove is working with Verl Workman, that is an incredible combination. You need to get your credit cards out and go do that. But really quickly, it was really hard. We had, a, we had a presentation we sent to them two weeks ago. Slides and everything. We said, forget it. Everybody's already said it. So we literally, my wife and I sat down last night and said, what can we bring that hasn't been brought? Or what can we do to augment what's been brought so that you'll go incorporate it? And I know what I wanted to say, and she wanted to talk about becoming. And the reason she had to take off is she's literally getting on a plane to go speak in her industry in Utah. Uh, so she has to get to Salt Lake tonight and speak tomorrow morning. Um, and the, the thing that I want you to pay attention to is you. That's what you have to do. See, I think it's incredible. I feel like God raised me to help people have a better life, okay? And I think, I think, I know that 99% of you feel the exact same way, yes or no? Yes. Yeah, right? And guess what happens when we do that? So I, I've studied personality for the last 20 years, behavioral styles, I studied what makes people click. Now I gotta tell you, there's some amazing people up here on stage that have probably done it a lot more than me, but I know one thing, when we want to help other people, 
that 87% of the population that wants to help people will help people to the detriment of themselves and use it as the excuse for not succeeding and not even consciously doing that. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna present you with a thought. Hi, Susan. How are you? I know that girl next to you, but she's very snobby. <laughs> so here's what I want you to think. Just listen to this, sub, this, this statement. God gave you the biggest project in, in your life when he gave you, wait for it, you. You've got a job to do. Okay, so m most people know my story. Uh, in my 21st year I, of, in the real estate industry, I started opening up Keller Williams franchises. I opened up nine of them. Everything was great. As Michael Tyson said, Mike Tyson says, everything's great till you get punched in the face. Well, 2008 punched me in the face. Seven of my nine offices were hemorrhaging $100,000 a month. I had just given up my three homes and a divorce to my ex-wife. I'm 52 years old, renting for the first time in my life, and by the time that catastrophe was over, I was 1.4 million in debt with a 440 credit score. Okay? I was telling my landlord, I'll pay you the rent as soon as I have my next closing and didn't even have anything under contract. I felt like an imposter, like a fraud. People would say, wow, you have really nice suits. Yeah, because I bought them when I was rich. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Here's what I want you to remember. I worked my butt off. What did I do? I got focused on the one thing I knew how to do really well, and that was sell houses. And luckily, God had me born and raised in an area where the average sale price was really high, so I got busy selling houses. But you know what? What happened in all those years I was owning franchises and helping thousands of people a day? I was 38 pounds overweight. I had high blood pressure. I had high cholesterol, okay? And I would play basketball once or twice a month and pretend that was working out, okay? So guess what I had to do, and I learned it the hard way. I had to finally put me first. Please. When you leave here with all this great information, please put you first for just a little while because you know what I do today? Today, now that I put me first, I'm 174 pounds. I have incredible suits because it's my thing. I like nice suits. And of course, when you have a wife like that lady, you have to make her fall in love with you every day again. So there is that. Here's what I want you to think about. If you put your first, if you start to feel healthier, you take care of your inside, and Glenn and Michael and the whole crew have set us up with health companies and everything we need to take care of ourselves. I mean, you saw Glenn? We literally had the only founder of a major real estate company that had a pot belly. Today, he looks like he's 36 years old because he took care of himself. And now he's helping us to do the same. Take care of you. And here's how you're going to do it. You don't like something about you? Start working on it right now, please. Okay? You don't have the bank account you want? Start working on it now. Okay? When, when I met and started dating Casey at our first date, guess what we realized? I was broke, and she had just filed bankruptcy and lost her home to short sale. We were the freaking broke couple. <laughs> but you know what we decided? Against her religious beliefs, Seriously, we moved in together because we thought we like each other a lot. We're probably going to stay together. Why pay two rents? So we moved in together. I said, I'll pay the rent for a while. You go pay back your debt. And then when that happened, then she started helping me while I started to pay back my debt. Her debt was 60 grand. Mine was 1.4 million, a little different. So, <laughs> but we started watching what we eat. We started taking care of things. And then we put work so that we could create something for ourselves together. Now, for those of you who are that guess, we are company agnostic right now. I don't care who you work for. I care that you start working for you. That's all I care about, okay? But guess what? I came to this company in January of 2017. We were still living paycheck to paycheck, but we were happy as heck because we loved each other and we knew we were working together, to, together towards something. How many of you know that, right? What did Mark Twain say? I can teach anybody to get what they want if I could just find somebody who knew. Well, guess what? I know. 
I know. And I can tell you that today I wake up so freaking happy because I'm surrounded with people who want to have a better life. This guy right here, when I see Michael in the hallway, I remember when he first met him, he came to the company after I did. And when I, when I see him in the hallway now, I know he's committed to having a great light himself and helping us all have that. But if he's more committed for you than you are for yourself, I used to say that when I was a Keller Williams franchise owner. Don Yoko and I used to joke about that. I'm sick of going to bed worrying about people who don't go to bed worrying about themselves. Start taking care of you, all right? On, on January 21st of 2021, we're still struggling to make life. We're still renting. We had just bought ourselves an RV and we felt so great because we owned something finally. Renting for 15 years. And my wife taps me on the shoulder. I'm literally in one room typing away Zooms. I don't think I've ever shared this part of the story, especially with you two. And she says, hey, you know that stock you've been buying with every closing? Because I close 60 to 100 houses a year every year. And she goes, and all the, you know, you've been icon every single year you've been here and all that. She goes, you know what it's worth today? And I go, no. She goes, three and a half million dollars. I, I literally am such a baby. I fell on the floor and started crying. And she said, the only thing missing was a binky. All right, so real quick, I got to get off. But what I want to tell you is within three months, we had bought our beautiful dream home overlooking the ocean in, in, Monterey, in Pacific Grove, California, right next to Carmel. And today, I, that's why I love AJ Mida's story so much. Of course, I didn't get it from my mom because she passed away, but I got one from me, AJ. So thank you. But I want you all to know that things can start being different today. Over the last three days, you've been presented with every tool you could possibly use. You just have to decide that you're going to put you first because today... I help over 5,000 people a day because I'm healthy and happy, resourceful and prosperous, and I still thank God every night. <laughs>